You're listening to the Skeptic's Guide to the Universe, your escape to reality. So, if you want to talk about conscious, you know, using the, the mentalist or magician tricks consciously in order to, to sell yourself to the world as a paranormalist, let's talk John Edwards. I mean, he's the, he's the king of them all. Yeah, he's done the, uh, the best out of and all of them. I mean, is he still on TV? John Edwards has the show Crossing Over for a while. I thought I, I don't think he's on uh, anymore. I believe it was canceled. Right? It was canceled. canceled. That's awesome. Where Why didn't we have a party? What <laughs> 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 We he um, uh, you know claims to channel or to be able to see the dead and to speak to the spirits of of the of the guests who are there, the people who are in are, are in his studio. And what he really right. does is a uh, is a sloppy cold reading. Now, um, again, for those of you who don't know, a cold reading is simply starting with general statements that are likely to be true about most people. You know, making a lot of guesses, and then when you get positive feedback, when you hit upon something that's 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 that's, uh, that's accurate, you get the positive feedback from the from the person you're giving the reading to. And Give then an example, you proceed. Please. So, like, well, Edwards will say, I see uh, an older female figure associated with you. I'm getting the letter M is in her name. Um, this, so, Mom. Mom. <laughs> and then, yeah, the person may volunteer. They might say, Mary. He's like, yes, Mary, the name is... You know, so, and this has been made fun of in, in many, many venues, of course, the, the best of which is South Park, the, the South Park episode about John Edwards. Yes. But, oh, classic. Awesome. So That's the thing is, it's, this is a mentalist trick that's been around for hundreds of years, and it's using simple, you know, deception and misdirection and illusion to make it seem as if and you have special that knowledge you that you don't have. That's what mentalism is all about. Right, and don't forget that it's it's also it's a two way street. There's also human psychology that comes into play. You've got things like selective validation, where it's just part of human psychology that you know if someone throws twenty wild ass guesses at you and hits two of them. Yeah. I mean that's pretty bad. That's pretty bad guessing. But but generally you will go away thinking, wow, he he's so accurate, and you'll only remember the hits right. and you'll forget the misses. And also, and, uh, you know, his show is high, is heavily edited. Yeah. You know, they really they they. Oh they, God, I believe they, it. They shoot three hours and they reduce it down to an hour. At least that's the way they did do yeah. it. I mean, by report, uh, he also worked the audience ahead of time, I and mean, he he did more than a cold reading. He cheated. Right. You know, he did a warm reading, and and, he, and yeah, there's important. even reports that he um, there was you know I I don't have his name handy, but a fellow skeptic went into the audience just to see it firsthand, and he reported that his answers. Were he were clipped, so he had the answer to one question, which was, was spliced together with another one. So it made it seem as if he was agreeing with something that he never agreed to. So I mean that's just yeah, that's, that's just you're cheating. But uh, someone who's halfway decent at cold reading could do a better job than John Edward did in, in pretending to talk to the dead. But the other thing that's clear is that because of the techniques that he's using, we know he's consciously lying. He's not self-deluded. He's lying. Right, right, and it goes all back to the fact that it, it it made him rich, and it brought that station in a ton of money, and they just the stations media just does not care what the truth is. The, the Sci-Fi Channel actually produced initially, you know, yeah, but then I think it, that's, it, right, yeah, and it, but it, it was canceled yeah. over a year ago. Yeah, too much fiction, not enough right. science. Well, wow. how about how about the um the woman, the pet psychic? My favorite, my favorite oh, yeah. all-time thing that she said, every once in a while I catch ten minutes of it, as long as I could stomach it. My favorite thing was this guy had a pet alligator, and she said, oh, your alligator's hungry. And that's that's a stretch. Tell you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's a stretch. She's Pretty brilliant. Good. I By wonder way, if he got sleepy later. I mean, that's, that's remarkable. <laughs> I'd like to say to everyone... Um, you should all go to uh, www.randyrandi.org. That's James Randi's site. There's a ton of information on there yeah. that's definitely worth looking into. A go wonderful day. resource. A wonderful resource. And yeah. after, after, after you go to the nest, go to randi.org. Yes, go to the nest first. <laughs> <laughs> so. Hey, Evan, let me. Uh, I, I was looking at your write-up on this this new guy, and uh, yes. there's, one, there's one quote that jumped out at me that uh, I think you got off the Internet. He was saying here, and I just wanted just to mention it with a brief response. He said something about, um, I think it's important to be skeptical. To be skeptical is to be open, but to completely close your mind off to something that doesn't seem rational, rational is not exactly skeptical. That is now a that, quote. 
that's that's a straw man argument right there. I mean, a true skeptic does not just turn your mi their minds off to something that doesn't seem rational. If they did, then quantum mechanics would would would, would seem to be hogwash. He, but it's he, not just that. It's not just that. It's also evidence. Right, right. It's evidence. Quantum mechanics has plenty of evidence. Ouija boards don't. Period. Well, and that's it. And that's that's a key thing he's missing. It, and, you know, well, here's another person who just strong. really doesn't understand what skepticism is. He doesn't. No, he he no. thinks he does. Well, we don't. We don't know that. We also not care because yeah, he's, he's selling something. Yeah, he this is this care. is his yeah. magic. Yeah. We don't know how much he believes he's saying. Right. But that. But that is well, a, that. That statement is is a cliche. It's very standard. The idea is that skeptic scientists are closed minded to the possibilities of the paranormal and whatnot. That is that's in a sense an ad hominem logical fallacy. It's basically saying. That we're wrong because we're closed-minded, right. you know, because we're not open to these possibilities. But, but well, shame right. on him! Yeah, shame right. on him! Either way, either he's uh, either he's deluded or lying. And either way, shame on him. I agree. So that, that reminds me of a great of a great little thing I heard. Of, I forget a few years ago. That's you know, it's great to have an open mind, but not so open that your brains fall out. <laughs> <laughs> <And that's laughs> the difference between having an open mind and having a hole right, in your head. Right. <laughs> right. Well, I think I've, I've argued in the past that it's actually the, the people who make these claims who are closed-minded, because they, they, they're they right. closed to the possibility that their claims are wrong. And that's the, the hardest lesson that scientists have to learn, right. is that the evidence can show that they're wrong. And when it does, that is when their heart and soul as a scientist is truly tested. And the good ones, the ones that are respected, the ones that you know, can um, stand up and face their peers are the ones who, when proven wrong, say, all right, this claim is wrong, let me go on with my life. But the true believers, the paranormalists, do not do that. When you show them evidence that their claim is wrong, they dismiss it, they deny it, they're totally close to it. They refuse to even consider the possibility that their cherished belief might be wrong. The oh, beliefs man. that you hold the most dear are the ones you should question the greatest. The That's most. absolutely correct. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, it's true. And also, who is, is this guy going to be our, uh, our loser of the, of the week? Sure, why don't we make loser him the loser week. of the week? Our <laughs> gullible loser of the week, Elaine New. Yeah, like loser. Elaine New. Look him up. <laughs> or not. Absolutely. For a laugh, maybe, but that's it. Don't buy his products. Fortunately, you can watch his show. Well, hopefully it'll go the way of John Edwards. Be canceled after its four episode run. We we can hope, oh, but let's hopefully. face it: the appeal of the paranormal, of mystery mongering, is far greater yes. than the appeal of cold rational logic and science, which is a shame. Because science is yeah, fascinating. Is science is the you know the, the most liberating, interesting, fascinating things in the world. I mean, the most bizarre ideas that have been thought of by human beings are things like quantum mechanics and black holes and. You know, the fact that all of the information necessary to make a person is curled up in every little cell in our body. I mean, these things are much, much more fantastical than anything the, the, the paranormal gurus have to say. And in, a much simpler, and in a much simpler scenario here, I think magical tricks are fascinating. Yeah, Good magicians, are. the Penn and Tellers, right. the James Randys, the, 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 the Harry Andersons of the world. And then they don't like really Good skeptical literature is, 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 is great, too. It all, it all has a place. It just doesn't have a place in being your guide to uh, living your life, to what's real, and to what's true. It certainly shouldn't be, it shouldn't be taught <laughs> as science in the science classroom of our schools. Absolutely. Agreed. Absolutely. Well, that's right. That's, that's the most well, you know, important, it's, it's, you know, We're talking about the media and these television shows, and it does bring up the point that although you know, we fight passionately over what passes for science in, in the public schools, and we should, but in reality people learn a great deal more and their beliefs are shaped far more by what they see on television and now on the internet and on computers than what they learn in the classroom. So, and we well, have certainly. absolutely lost the battle for the hearts and souls of the mass media because what they, they sell mystery mongering, they sell sensationalism and they love the paranormal and they just do not have the desire, the inclination of the patience for good science. The Skeptic's Guide to the Universe is produced by the New England Skeptical Society in association with the James Randi Educational Foundation and Skeptic.org. For more information on this and other episodes, please visit our website at www.theskepticsguide.org.